I welcome you to this lecture of microscale uh, transport process. Uh, what we have been discussing is uh, uh, the issue of dispersion in microscale chromatography. Uh, what we have discussed so far is how Taylor dispersion takes place uh, when you introduce a small, uh, when you introduce a slug at the inlet because of this parabolic velocity profile in a micro channel that slug gets uh, deformed and then that leads to a different kind of uh, mixing which we, we, we refer this as dispersion. This is a different kind of mixing and we try to at least uh, put together the, uh, after the available theories that uh, define uh, the, the theories that define this this sort of mixing uh, and then we said that this kind of this type of mixing can be uh, mm, uh, can be a problem or this type of mixing needs to be addressed in 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 case of a mm, uh, in case of a chromatography application chromatography type application in a micro channel uh, if i if i look at the my powerpoint slide here what we see is that uh, this we discussed in the last class that solute transport in microscale chromatography the objective of this is to identify components in gas or liquid mixture. Uh, this is happening because of accumulation of a component at the interface between two phases um, here two by two by two phases what we mean is one stationary phase that is the adsorbent uh, um, held next to the wall and the other one is the gas phase or the, the phase that is flowing the view is called a mobile phase. Uh, this is this uh, accumulation is happening due to attractive intermolecular forces. A pulse of mixed solutes is injected into one end of a tube with inner wall coated with adsorbent. Uh, now, solutes are adsorbed to different degrees and elute at different times. I, I try to explain to you this adsorption and desorption mechanism and uh, why, why a solute would be adsorbed and then again it would be desorbed and it will elute uh, at the outlet. And uh, last point is the conventional chromatography utilizes packed bed uh, mic uh, microscale chromatography uses adsorbent coated inner walls of a channel or a monolith coated with uh, coated with adsorbent. Basically, in a micro channel, you probably cannot afford to have um, beads, which is commonly in there in case of a macro scale uh, chromatography. So there there would be some some um, adjustment to it. Now what we have done next is. We, uh, we, we, we mentioned uh, that this technique may be compromised by dispersion. This technique may be compromised by dispersion. That means the chromatography when you, when you uh, run it, uh, I mean we, we uh, at least this was showed in the last class that the, the, the when the, when say, say you are, you are introducing A, B, C, D and they are eluting at different times. So you get peaks of A, B, C, D at the outlet. Now these peaks can we can get broadened because of this dispersion, and so um, it, so so it, so to find exactly if if it would have been a sharp peak, you could have identified okay this is the peak. But if it gets broadened, uh, there is always a possibility that some peak get lost, some peaks get lost because of these uh, this dispersion. So uh, that's why that's what probably the first point in the PowerPoint slide means the technique may be compromised by dispersion. And then what we do here is we are trying to write down the governing equations. Uh, in the last class, we have we have uh, we tried to put together the mass balance uh, equation uh, for the mobile phase. This this is what we arrived at, right? This is the accumulation term. This is this is basically the uh, radial diffusion, okay? And on top of that, there was this axial diffusion, and this is the convective term as before. And we have discussed in the last class various boundary conditions. The initial condition is that you introduced a pulse at the inlet and then when t greater than 0, you are assuming that at r equal to 0 symmetry exists and at the wall and uh, next to the adsorbent, not wall, the, at, the, at, the, at the interface between the mobile phase and the adsorbent, there exists uh, um, uh, this, this equilibrium which is governed by this, this equation, uh, you are assuming linearity here and the continuity of flux. This is something which you assumed in the, the, this, this is something which we discussed in the last class. This is for the mobile phase and for the stationary phase what we have is that for the, for this is for the, for the adsorbent that means the stationary phase. So that is why it was uh, superscripted with a prime. So concentration of that same species in the adsorbent phase 
that this is the accumulation term and this is the radial diffusion and I mentioned this in the last class that there will not be any uh, convective term of course and there could be some uh, um, th 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 that axial diffusion is, is neglected because you are assuming that the concentration gradient in the axial direction is, uh, is, is not uh, appreciable. So, here also you have a boundary uh, initial and boundary condition at t equal to 0 the entire adsorbent is, uh, is, is untouched. So, C 1 prime is equal to 0 and at t greater than 0 at the wall that means beyond the adsorbent I am not talking about the, that means R is equal to capital R is the interface of gas and adsorbent and R is equal to capital R plus delta that means that gives the uh, that, that is we are talking about the wall beyond the adsorbent and there there is not any diffusive flux there that is that is the end of the story because nothing can pass through the tube is impermeable. So, this is d del c 1 prime del r equal to 0. So, this is something which you are working with delta is the thickness of adsorbent layer. So, these are these are primarily the governing equations and various boundary conditions that you can have. Now, what if I go back to the power point slide once again. I mentioned here that extended form of Taylor dispersion equation is used and three components of E z term. Uh, what do we what we mean by this? What we mean by this is that you have what we what we write here is that C 1 bar what was the original I mean this equation by now we have written it so many times you should be you should be able to um, you should be able to write this uh, I mean you do not have to refer any text okay. by rote you can just uh, write this. So, this is this is the equation we had all right this is the equation we had earlier this is the equation we had earlier. So, you have uh, th th this is this is the equation that same equation that we had earlier for Taylor dispersion. Now, what we are uh, wh what is new here what is what is what is different from the conventional Taylor dispersion is first of all we said that these E z term we need to we need to we need to look into these E z term once again and also we need to look into these T 0 what is this T 0 because this T 0 is something which is new to us I mean ear earlier we were working with T. Okay. So, the idea behind uh, doing this exercise I have already pointed out the governing equations I have already pointed out that there are two governing equations two mass balance equation one for the solid phase and the other for the mobile phase and there are uh, boundary conditions or initial conditions that are in place. Now, you have to solve this equation, but your objective here is to um, it, I, I mean at least at least the way the people have the, the researchers have thought about it is what they have done they have come up with this solution they are saying that okay this is the this is the solution we have okay and let us now talk about the e z and t 0 such that this becomes the solution of that those two governing equations okay so that is that is what the researchers have already obtained what the difference here is what was the e z term for for say Taylor dispersion you must have uh, must be remembering v naught r naught whole square divided by 48 d that was just a single term small term here the e z would be comprising of three different sum of three terms because it, it is complicated and you, you, you are working with a different more complicated equations than Taylor dispersion. So, this e z has to be uh, the, then that uh, that is absorbed in the e z. So, we, the, what, what researchers have done is they have not they have not touched this form this functional form they said that okay, let it be because this functional form let is allows me to compare how things are because this functional form was in place for just um, uh, say diffusion of a small uh, spot of dye in an infinite medium. So, this let us continue with this functional form and write a compact expression for E z this ok. So, and see where, where how this E z is changing because we started with D when, when we talked about the diffusion of a small spot of tracer in infinite medium there what we have done is we we start we we started with this expression, but there we had instead of E z we had D that is diffusion coefficient 
which is something we know, which is which is available, a bulk property. Okay. Then we said, okay, if we go to Taylor dispersion, we continue with the same form, but instead of d, we have something called a dispersion coefficient, coefficient e z. And we said the expression for e z you already know, v not r not square by 48 d. I mean that we have already looked into. Now what researchers are saying is that we continue with the same compact functional form. However, we 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 work with a we work out how this e z would be affected because of these complications. Okay, so that that's that's a that's a idea here. So what they have done is they have written e z as a as sum of three terms, and those three terms are d into one plus k prime plus r not square v not square by forty eight d into 1 plus 6 k prime plus 11 k prime square divided by 1 plus k prime plus delta square v naught square divided by 3 d prime into k prime divided by 1 plus k prime. Okay, now, what is k prime here? First of all, the k prime here is equal to h delta divided by r 0 okay, and t naught is equal to L divided by v 0 into 1 plus k prime. Okay, uh, what do we have here? What we have here is first of all you got to understand that there i mean he, i mean you 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 got to appreciate that this this equation system is pretty complex okay but you you have already noticed this while when we try to at least identify the steps by which this taylor dispersion has been uh, the equation for taylor dispersion has been arrived at so this here you are working with the two different governing governing equations clubbed or or put together so this equation system is pretty complex. So one of the assumption here, uh, when while arriving at these expression for E z, is that the adsorbed layer is thin. The adsorbed layer is thin. That means the delta is small compared to R zero. This that is what it means. Now this is one of the assumption you have, okay? And this C1 bar is of course what is C1 bar? C1 bar is the av concentration which is averaged over the entire cross section. I hope this you should you should keep in mind well that one is species one, the subscript one C1 bar that one talks about species one. If you have one, two, three, four, then you will have C2, C3, C4, okay? And this bar replace uh, bar represents the concentration which is averaged over the entire cross section. That means, the you have a micro channel and at the outlet you have a detector and the detector will detect the average concentration for the entire cross section because detector will not detect individual layers. Though you have a parabolic velocity profile and one layer is moving at a higher velocity, but detector will detect over the entire cross section. Detector cannot detect that that, that level as such the, the dimension of the micro channel is small. So, you uh, so 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 this C1 bar is the concentration which is averaged over the entire cross section. So, this is the expression that you have here, this is the expression that you have here, and this is the this is the expression for E z. Now, as I said at the very outset, this E z is comprising of three different terms, okay. And these here we have made use of these and, and the T naught is used here. Here we have used this T naught instead of T, and this T naught is given by this quantity t naught is equal to l divided by v0 into 1 plus k prime okay uh, can you tell me what would be this l divided by v0 i think it, it, it this itself represents time only thing is in we, on top of that you have another another factor added which is 1 plus k prime okay now what is k prime k prime is equal to h delta by r0 so what is h delta by r0 h delta by r0 if i if i look at it here clearly k prime is equal to h delta by r0 
So, this is basically equilibrium ratio of solute held in the adsorbent layer held in the adsorbent to that inside the tube itself. Okay, that is that is what is K prime equilibrium ratio of solute held in the adsorbent to that inside the tube itself. Okay, now this is K prime, and so what you are doing is you when you are writing this T zero as L divided by V zero into one plus K prime. If I write this once again, T zero is equal to L by V zero into one plus K prime. So what this gives is the this gives you the average. residence time of solute okay now if i try to with this understanding now if i try to identify what are these various terms in ez i said that there are three terms that is they are clubbed into three components ez has been clubbed into three components so what does where are they arising from this first component d into 1 plus k prime this is arising from axial diffusion okay and here you have another term this is arising from i mean this must be obvious to you we have at the as prefix r not square v not square by 48d so this is this term is basically arising from Taylor dispersion all right and this term this is arising from retardation in the adsorbent layer why there is retardation retardation in the adsorbent layer why there is retardation because you have this uh, this 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 chromatographic effect present so this solute is getting adsorbed so this ez is comprising of three different components first component is arising from axial diffusion the second component is arising from taylor dispersion and the third component is retardation in the adsorbent layer and all these three components they are contributing to the spreading of the uh, spreading of that peak and what you want to do is you want to minimize this spreading all right so now if i go back to the powerpoint uh, slide what we have here is uh, we said that the technique may be compromised by dispersion mm -hmm. extended form of taylor dispersion equation that is what we have already written here and it has three components of ez term okay the second term arising from taylor dispersion what that means is that making tube 10 times smaller can reduce this component of dispersion 100 times because you have a r not square type dependence so small channels are ideal for chromatography so smaller the channel the better of course uh, you cannot endlessly you cannot make this small endlessly because you will encounter a very high pressure drop in that case i mean as you make it smaller but at least from the dispersion point of view that this is the, the the smaller is the better the third term arising from retardation in the adsorbent layer third term is arising from retardation in the adsorbent layer that that you have already uh, pointed out these if diffusion in the adsorbent is very fast or delta by r0 is much less than 1 no effect of third term on the other hand the separation due to adsorption becomes dominant when k prime is much greater than 1 what do we mean here we let us let us focus on what i have written here uh, on the third term we have 
these diffusion in the adsorbent when the diffusion in the adsorbent is very fast diffusion in the adsorbent is very fast means this d prime is very high when the d prime is very high automatically the value of this component would be low okay or delta by r0 is much less than 1 delta by r0 much less than 1 that means delta square would be very small so either d prime is much higher or delta is much small both have the same effect that will make this term insignificant okay on the other hand if k prime is much greater than 1 if k prime is much greater than 1 then the separation due to adsorption becomes dominant so this term becomes dominant if k prime is much greater than 1 uh, if k prime is much greater than 1 then this will cancel out and this this remains there okay but if k prime is much smaller than 1 then this term would be much smaller so this is so this is the idea here that because your objective here is to is to reduce this ez as much as possible then only you can have this in the c1 bar you can have least amount of spreading the concent that concentration pro profile i mean you have put a peak here you you put a peak here this is the peak you have given and what you get at the outlet of the tube is something like this and you want to minimize this ideally you want this peak to be uh, this also should come out as a peak so how you can reduce this broadening is you can reduce this ez term and the for redu reduction of ez term of course one thing is you can reduce this r0 to the extent possible i mean without hurting um, I, I mean because there will be huge amount of pressure drop and pressure drop means that even if you keep the outlet at atmospheric pressure the inlet of the channel will have very high pressure and it is the first place it will start leaking is through that through the port through which you are injecting so this is this is the problem there or otherwise you can play with the third term and you try to reduce this i mean or or, or i mean in case the d prime is big d prime is high then denominator is high means this quantity will become smaller or if delta is low that means delta by r0 is low then also this will become uh, th then also this will become uh, smaller so that that also can help you in the in reducing the broadening so this equation sort of this expression for so so we are we don't care about this expression this equation anymore because this is the same equation that we have been talking about but we focus on this ez and we'll see we see how this how much would be the spreading or if you have two different uh, systems how much spreading will take place for each case which one will have um, broader peak and which one which one will have sharper peak so that can be worked out through this equation system so through this through this uh, functional form now if what you need to look at in this in this powerpoint slide is that different solutes will have different retention time t0 depending on the k prime of corresponding solute what is t0 here if i if i look at look at uh, these uh, what we have written here or here t0 is equal to l by v0 into 1 plus k prime and k prime would be different for different solutes we have 1 2 3 4 for 1 you have some k prime for 2 you have another k prime so you have depending on the value of the k prime it would be different solutes will have different retention time objective here is to make ez tending to 0 ideally ez should be that that spreading should be made close to 0 so that each solute eludes as sharp pulse however for broadened peak the pulses overlap and identification is compromised this you already you have appreciated r0 and v0 should be decreased to achieve ez tending to 0 r0 because because r0 v0 they are appearing in the taylor dispersion term in the, in the in the second term so r0 should be small v0 should be small okay r0 and v0 should be decreased to achieve ez tending to 0 as long as pressure drop is not excessive now if v0 is reduced the pressure drop would be less but if r0 is also reduced then the that will have an adverse effect on the pressure drop so you are that, that the system has to be designed appropriately but these are the at least from the dispersions point of view these are the terms and these this is the type of dependence you have as far as the broadening of the peak is concerned okay so this is uh, yeah this is this is i think all i have as far as the uh, dispersion is concerned we have we have talked about uh, first of all the difference between a diffusion and a dispersion 
and uh, we have come up with a functional form just for diffusion and we retained that same functional form C1 bar, uh, uh, we retained that same functional form and then we continued defining what is Teller dispersion and we showed that in case of a chromatography in a micro channel uh, of what all terms would be playing but retaining the same functional form how the individual terms would be affected because of various um, co contributions from various parameters. So, with that practically I uh, with that I would be closing this discussion on dispersion. Uh, the next topic that I pick up here is on electro kinetics. Okay. So, this is this is a new topic. So, we are we are moving away from mixing. So, we, we started with uh, first of we discussed about the fabrication of various devices. Then next we worked on passive mixing and we tried to uh, show that remaining within the framework of that same mass balance equation over a, over a differential element and then uh, taking the solution how we can mix, uh, mix and match, how we can have uh, a elongational uh, deformation or linear stretching and, and, I, 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 and, and we are basically in between somewhere, but the two extremes we discussed and, and, and various how, how we can treat this mixing. Um, how we can derive, how we can obtain a functional form for mixing and uh, what are the various passive mixers that are available, various mixing schemes that are available. And then next we said that there is a problem in the hand, uh, problem in hand here which is called dispersion which can have adverse effect in this, this dispersion is also another form of mixing, however this mixing is unwanted, the, that the passive mixing that we have discussed was the desired mixing, but here it is not desired however you cannot avoid it because it is it is a uh, it is it is defined by the um, the fluid fluid mechanics itself so next topic that we we pick up is something called electrokinetics okay electrokinetics basically it is it concerns interaction between solid surfaces ionic solutions and macroscopic electric field Okay, interaction between solid surfaces, ionic solutions and macroscopic electric field. So, all these three aspects are involved here. Uh, we are mostly focusing on electrophoresis and electroosmosis here in this lecture, though there are other forms of electrokinetics, uh, there are other forms also present. Uh, here we are not we are not talking about electro weighting. I think uh, that would be taken up separately. Uh, I mean, it, it will not be taken up by me. This electro weighting is another very important topic, where uh, basically the contact angle gets changed. But that is that is not we are taking up here. Uh, we are mostly focusing on electrophoresis and electroosmosis. Now these both are manifest manifestations of electrostatic component of the Lorentz force on ions and surface charges and Newton's second law of motion. So, here you are talking about electrostatic component of Lorentz force on ions and surface charges. So, you are looking at first of all the electrostatics, okay, the electro electrostatic forces and also you are looking at the Newton's second law. So, it is, it is a mixture of both. Basically, what we will write is we will write down the, I, I mean our gov governing equation here in these in these scheme of things would be navier stokes equation however we have additional body force term arising from these interactions these electrostatic components etc so basically we are working with the framework of navier stokes equation only with an additional body force term so that is that is basically this uh, wh what we would be working on and these electro so now we define quickly what is electrophoresis and what is electroosmosis Electrophoresis is induced drift motion of colloidal particles or molecules suspended in liquids due to an electric field. Okay, and electroosmosis is motion of electrolyte liquid with respect to fixed wall due to electric field applied parallel to the surface. What are these now? Electroosmosis motion. What is the last point? Motion of electrolyte liquid with respect to a fixed wall due to electric field applied parallel to the surface. What that means is, suppose you have a surface here, okay, and you have an electrolyte present on the surface. What is an electrolyte? I mean, how do you define that? For example, 
say NaCl breaking down into Na plus and Cl minus something like that which is which is which is giving you ions okay there okay and you have a surface here now you can say that, uh, okay first first let me tell you what 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 will happen here for some reason this surface will acquire some charge may be positive or negative what could be the reason of this charge developing on this surface there are various reasons possible in fact if you look at this powerpoint slide solid surface acquires surface charge when brought into contact with an electrolyte liquid due to there are three points given here differential adsorption of ions from electrolyte onto solid surface differential adsorption of ions from electrolyte onto solid surface so this solid surface is these ions that are present here ions are present plus and minus these ions are roaming around everywhere on the top on top of the surface there is differential adsorption that means some particular ions are adsorbed more by the surface than other and thereby you are developing some extra charge the second point is differential solution of ions from the surface to the electrolyte so from the surface something is going back to the solution from the surface something is going to the solution some differential solution of ions differential solution that means differential means plus is more than the minus okay that is what i mean by differential so differential solution of ions from the surface to the electrolyte or the third point here is deprotonation or ionization of surface groups such as surface silanol group of glass or silica since we are we have been uh, extensively talking about glass and silica uh, we we have been uh, talking about this glass as a micro channel device um, as a material for micro channel device so that will have silanol group SiOH which breaks down into SiO minus and H plus okay so this H plus is available and this H plus goes away so this gives so you have deprotonation of the surface group so if H plus goes away so automatically the minus charges they are left there and these minus charges will be these minus charges will be sitting there so the surface will be having all minus charges all right so for various reasons there could be the something some 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 charges may develop on the surface deprotonation is most common what we have here deprotonation is most common and net surface charge density at the liquid solid interface is a function of local ph full deprotonation at ph greater than 9 net surface charge density at the liquid solid interface is a function of local ph i mean this you must appreciate because ph is what it it gives you some understand what, what is the hydrogen ion concentration right so what ph you are holding the surface at that has a tremendous effect on how much h plus is going from the surface to to the to the electrolyte so so the local ph is it is functional to local ph net surface charge density at the liquid solid interface is a function of local pH and full deprotonation at pH greater than 9. So this is a fact which is which is there. I mean if you have a surface you will develop some charge there and because of this charge developing the opposite charge from the electrolyte would be attracted to the wall. So if you have all plus here you will have all minus sitting here like this. Now this 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 is happening with any 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 uh, any wall material so if you have a pipe on the wall this is happening but for a macro scale you probably do not care much about it because uh, this the, the, this this is insignificant but in a micro scale when you, when it comes to a micro channel this particular phenomena can be important i mean this this because of the scale of the problem this 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 particular phenomena needs to be studied okay so what we have is ions of opposite charge in the electrolyte are attracted and the like charges are repelled so opposite charges are coming to the wall and the like charges that means the plus that will be repelled from the surface that that is that is the idea that is that is that is how it happens everywhere net excess of mobile ions net excess of mobile ions near the interface with charge opposite to that of the wall is referred as edl 
electric, the, the full form is electric double layer. Okay. These excess charges can be used to impart a force on the bulk fluid through ion drag. These, these excess charges can be used to impart a force on bulk fluid through ion drag. What, what is meant here, or what, what this statement means here is that if you have a channel, if you have a channel, then you will have similarly the upper part of the wall also will have, upper part of the wall will also have these positive say you have a flow between two parallel or, or you have two parallel plates, we have not talked about flow. We have say, say we have two parallel plates. So, the upper plate also will have the same thing and then you will have opposite charges attracted to it, all right. And then these other charges are floating around here and there, right. So, what this is saying is that you will have the concentration of some opposite charges next to the wall, okay. Of course, there would be one layer which is immediately adjacent to the wall, which would be so called a static layer, okay, which is which is called which is which is static, but there would be a diffused layer. I mean, it would be up to some distance away, there would be a concentration of negative ions. I mean, there would be some positive charges, but the negative ions, the, the concentration would be more, and that is a diffused charge, which is which is a mobile charge. Which, which is mobile, okay. So, maybe maybe immediately next to the wall there would be a compact layer, but little bit away from there, there is a concentration of opposite ion which is mobile, okay. So, that is that is that is very much present around. And of course, the positive because positive and negative they are all they have to be equal should be in equal numbers. So, then there are positives everywhere. Okay, so this is this is this is next to the wall, and this is probably the uh, away from the wall, which is which is probably the, you would say the bulk. Okay, now if you put the electrodes, if you put the electrodes here, suppose you put an electrode here. This is an electrode here, and this is another electrode here. Okay, and then. you put this electrode here and you put, so this is acting as an anode and this is acting as a cathode. So, what will happen is this, these negative charges, they would be pulled towards this direction, these negative charges would be pulled towards this direction, negative charges from the diffuse layer, the negative charges which are mobile, which are free to move, which is not sitting next to the wall held permanently, but the, which is free to move. So, that would be that would be f moving and that wh while these ions are moving from one direction to the other, this is generating a drag force. This is generating. So, if I look at the power point slide, what we see here is that ions of opposite charge, if we look at the power point slide here, the ions of opposite charge in the electrolyte are attracted and the light charges are repelled the net excess of mobile ions near the interface with charge opposite to that of the wall is referred as electric double layer. These excess charges can be used to impart a force on bulk fluid through ion drag, through ion drag. So, now if I, if I, if I look at what I have drawn here on this page, what, what we are saying is that these negative charges will be pulled to one electrode. Okay, and the positive charges, no, I mean negative charges will be pulled towards one electrode, okay. And this while while this pulling, while this pulling, it would be pulling the, the there would be a bulk, there, there, there will be a force on the bulk fluid through ion drag. So, so what, what in fact, in fact we can, we can, uh, we can show that from, from Navier-Stokes equation, we said there would be a 
body force term right an additional body force term coming in here. So, what we will be doing here is from the Navier-Stokes equation we can show that okay there would be viscosity there would be everything, but because of that body force term that extra body force term that we are talking about because of that body force term there would be a net movement of the fluid from one direction to the other and that is arising because of this body force term as I said. So, you can call this that these excess charges can be used to impart a force on bulk fluid through ion drag that is what you can say here all right. So, this, this we, we, will, we will get into the theories of it how we can really have in fact what we will do is I will give you the velocity gradient I mean what is delta V and I will ask you to find out what would be the velocity ok. So, you, 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 you will be having those theories in hand how we can find out the velocity here. In fact, uh, this is one, uh, one uh, pumping mechanism people have uh, researchers have proposed electro osmotic pumping I mean you might have heard of this term. So, this is based on this principle. So, I mean why I have gone so far here is if we now look at what we have said so far I repeat once again what we have uh, what we studied before here uh, what, what we learned here is that interaction between solid surfaces ionic solutions and macroscopic electric field that is what we are talking about here. We will be discussing about electrophoresis and electro osmosis here both are manifestation of electrostatic component of the Lorentz force on ions and surface charges and Newton's second law of motion. Il now, now if I if I look at the electro osmosis if I look at the electro osmosis the second uh, the last uh, component electro osmosis is motion of electrolyte liquid with respect to a fixed wall due to electric field applied parallel to the surface. Do you do you agree to this what we have discussed here here on this on this paper what we have discussed is basically the motion of electrolyte liquid with respect to a fixed wall the wall was fixed electrolyte liquid is moving due to electric field applied parallel to the surface all right field is pa applied parallel to the surface field is in this direction. So, field is applied parallel to the surface ok. So, that is that is what is referred as electro osmosis. Now, if we look at what is electrophoresis in the PowerPoint slide induced drift motion of colloidal particles or molecules suspended in liquids due to an electric field. Uh, what that means is that you have similarly a positive and a negative electrode and you have a colloidal particle or so think of a particle altogether you have a particle ok. You have a particle if the particle is big if the particle is big you will if we can one can show that you have an electric double layer developing around the particle and this particle as a whole will be pulled to one one electrode. On the other hand there would be drag force acting on the particle because moving a particle to one electrode it has to overcome the drag force. So, this would be an interplay between the drag force on the particle and the electric double layer that is developed around the particle which would be pulled by the electrode. So, this is this would be another another uh, another game where these these concepts of electric double layer will be important, um, but in a, in a different way. So, this this sort of scheme is referred as electrophoresis. So, depending on how what is the size of the particle etcetera that will be or, or how much of charge it has on the particle it will be pulled by different velocities ok and velocity by that I mean the terminal velocity. So, diff that means if you if you take this system apply the voltage run it for some time and then freeze it then you will see that um, that over that delta t time each particle is moved by some distance depending on the size of the particle and depending on the charge that it has. So, you will find that the particles of same size or particles of same charge they will be forming band ok and by identifying these bands you can or, or probably from pre calibration and then running the sample then you can identify ok the particle is having these properties or or that the sample that you have it contains a b c d and a is a is of this size and this charge b is of this size this charge. So, this this kind of analysis you can do. 
so these are these are essentially so what i what i what i want to mention here is the we, so we, we we understand the interaction between solid surfaces ionic solutions and macroscopic electric field we understood what is uh, at least uh, the, that the interplay of electrostatic component of the uh, electrostatic components and these newton second law of motion and uh, i mean we have some idea of what is so electrophoresis is induced drift motion of colloidal particles or molecules suspended in liquids due to an electric field and electro osmosis is motion of electrolyte liquid as a whole okay this we already discussed so this is what we had now this electric double layer once again the solid surface why solid surface will acquire a surface charge because when it comes into contact with an electrolyte liquid there are so many things that can happen one two three deprotonation is most common and of course the ph has a, a good effect on the, so so the, the net surface charge would be function of local ph then uh, we said that these ions of opposite charge in the electrolyte are attracted and the like charges are repelled the net excess of mobile ions net excess of mobile ions near the uh, net excess of mobile ions near the interface with charge opposite to that of uh, the wall is uh, opposite to that of the wall is referred as electric double layer these excess charges these excess charges can be used to impart a force on bulk fluid through ion drag and the counter ions uh, counter ions reside in compact layer next to the wall which is referred as the stern layer that is in adsorbed state and counter ions also reside in more diffuse layer next to the wall where the ions are free to move now now one thing i would like you to appreciate here is that if i if i look at what we, what we are writing here on this paper we said that we have we have some charge okay we we have some charge here so these these are all uh, this is the wall and we have positive charges here this is i mean so then i mean even even if even if this wall is a metal still we can have this kind of charge there would be a layer which is referred as thomas fermi layer the thickness of this layer is maximum it goes to 0.2 nanometer even it is less than that that is where these these charges are predominant okay beyond this i mean the, these these when it comes to metals i mean it has it has uh, it has electrons it has uh, the, the, they have they are the, they have uh, they have practically excess charges available so what what uh, the essentially what these the, what these researchers they have uh, they, they they found is that these these charges are heavily screened heavily screened in the sense that these charges will remain this way i mean it will not you will not expect even if this is a metal that these charges will escape okay so this there is a screening involved this screening this this so this is this is referred as a thomas fermi layer within which this this there will be concentration of charges but that does not because as such there would be a lot of charges inside i mean and there are a lot of uh, i mean i do not want to get into the Uh, the distribution of atoms etc but there are available charges as such which will ensure that these charges are screened next to the wall up to a distance which is less than 0.2 nanometer that is that is what you have to keep in mind though so you even if you have a metal wall still you can have this possible okay it is not it need not be it has to be a colloid or uh, something like that so this is this is what you have one thing second thing is this this existence of this opposite charge so this is this is the end of the wall so this bold line is the wall so these plus these are this is little bit inside the wall now uh, immediately outside the wall there would be opposite charge we said right so you will ha you will be having a very sp small distance a very small distance where these negative charges are held uh, one thing i want you to appreciate i mean this we we are work still working with the framework of whatever we studied in a macroscopic field so there would be 
say adsorption of neutral atoms possible on the wall. So, it is not that it will be all arranged plus and minus, there could be a large atom, um, large neutral entity sitting there adsorbed on the surface. There could be, there could be so many other things happening, but as far as the charges are concerned, they are there. That is what, and since we are talking about electric double layer, so we are only focusing on charges. We are not talking about other, other, other entities. But there will be other entities also present. For example, a neutral, neutral molecule will be adsorbed on the surface, and which is very much possible. There will be adsorption, desorption. Everything is going on. Plus, on addition, on top of it, there would be these array of charges present. Now, this layer, a very small, very uh, thin layer, where the, the charges which are there inside this layer, these, these, these charges are held strongly. These charges are held, adsorbed to the wall, and these charges are referred. Uh, this layer, this layer is referred as stern layer. S T E R N stern layer. Uh, now, this existence of this layer, I mean, it's very difficult to confirm. I mean, what what exactly is happening? In fact, uh, the researcher who 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 was doing the pioneering work here is Helmholtz. Helmholtz is the person. But in fact, in fact, this layer in a lot of places you will find that they ini initially it was it used to be referred as Helmholtz layer. Layer. Okay. Now this the problem would the problem was there is that this layer. What what researchers have found is that there exists another layer, which is probably much on a wider level where you have predominantly minus charges and some plus charges as well little one one uh, so some plus charges as well but predominantly minus charges okay but some plus charges here and there okay and these charges they are mobile they are not strong they are not absorbed by the wall they are mobile and these charges can be pulled by application of an by, by putting an electrode. These charges can be pulled, and these charges can give body force to the Navier-Stokes equation and pull the rest of the liquid as a whole. Okay, so so these charges is what what matters. Okay, so then probably they differentiated into these uh, stern layer, which is next to the wall, and these 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 diffused layer. It is, it, it is this is called Chapman layer. There, 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 are, there are various scientists who have, so initially it was some proposition and then later on from initially there it was it was proposed from the uh, pro, pro, proposed from the free energy point of view, from thermodynamics point of view okay and then they said okay there should be provision like this and then people have showed I mean electrosmotic pump is in existence people have shown movement of uh, fluid by this method. So, uh, so then naturally the, this, this there has to be a diffuse layer. So then, then these so th these these things continue to develop. Okay, I uh, should I have to wrap up uh, this discussion here. What I will do in the in the in the next class is I will start uh, start solving. I, I mean, I will start writing the governing equation that defines what would be the concentration of plus ions, C plus, as a function of Z. C minus as a function of Z. What is Z? Z is distance from the wall. Z is distance from the wall. So, how the con plus concentration changes with Z, how minus concentration changes with Z, because this information is very important. Once we have that, then only we can develop, we can write down the body force term in Navier Stokes equation, and then, and then because our final aim is to find out what would be the velocity. Okay, from Navier Stokes equation, I do not apply any pressure drop. I do not apply any pressure. P de delta P, I mean P inlet and P outlet, they are held at same pressure. P inlet and P outlet held at same pressure. I have applied just the voltage, and now I am seeing the bulk movement of the fluid, and what is the velocity? What is the average velocity by which the fluid is moving? That velocity I have to find out. So I have to use Navier-Stokes equation only with the body force term would be arising from these ion drag. So, be, before we find out, it is very important that we find out how the concentration changes plus ion concentration and minus ion concentration because here you can see the minus ion concentration would be higher at z equal to 0 and then it goes down. Then if that is so, then the opposite ion concentration would be just the reverse. So, 
what would be the functional form so we will start from there so in the next class we will start from there uh, that's all i had for today's discussion